Welcome back everybody to another episode of Kaiju VFX. Today we have a rather interesting episode, requested by Patreon supporter William Zorio. Today we're going to do sort of a basic introduction to some uh, 3D movement in After Effects. Uh, now, this isn't necessarily going to be 3D per se, um, because After Effects operates on a principle usually referred to as 2.5D. And what I mean by that is if we enable 3D for this, you know, layer of gulls are right here, and uh, we rotate it, it's not 3D. It's a flat image, but you know, we, we don't, we can't really like do a 3D model. So let's say we make a, uh, a solid. And we uh, scale that down. Surely that'd be like a, a 3D cube, right? Nope, it's flat. After Effects does not operate in a way that generally allows you to make 3D objects. Uh, so there's something that we could do. We could, uh, you know, just make a black solid and add, if you have this plugin, it's a paid third party plugin, Video Copilot's Element 3D. You know, we could go into the scene setup and, uh, you know, we can make shapes and everything in here. And uh, like we're doing today, make a city, you know, there's just tons of buildings. Um, could do all that. And if we make a camera, that would let us uh, view the city as an actual 3D object. And that's what I use a lot. Uh, but for the purpose of today, because I don't want to go through a tutorial that is for a plugin that I'm sure not many people watching this have, since it is a rather expensive paid plugin. Today, we're going to create a uh, basic 3D environment using some images in After Effects and basically just show you the ropes a little bit of doing some 3D work in After Effects or 2.5D work, whatever you want to call it. So again, first let's make a camera. We'll just call this camera. We'll make it a one node camera. And so now we have a camera. Uh, there's nothing else around us besides Golza. But uh, you know, if we have C, we can have the camera controls. We can uh, orbit, we can dolly in and out, and uh, we can pan around as we please. And of course, all of that can be keyframed uh, with the use of uh, the position and rotation properties of the camera. So let's go ahead and uh, add in a sky as our basic background. So uh, I've got some uh, sky maps here and I'll look for one that we want to use. We'll go with four. Make that a 3D object. And uh, one thing to keep in mind, since we are working in 3D space now, uh, so if we were to orbit around and, you know, sort of look at this scene from a... Uh, you know, a different point of view, this is still flat, even though these are both uh, 3D layers. So let's open a custom view real quick, and we can kind of see the, uh, the scene that we're working with. So we want to try to make this look as dynamic as possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the sky background and we're going to push it really far back in Z-space, uh, sort of to act like the sky is actually a very uh, big element in the background and isn't just, uh, you know, a flat image that is on the same plane as Golza. So uh, we'll go back to our active camera, push that back a little bit more, and then we'll scale it up a lot. And then we'll move it down just so we get it in view of uh, the plate here. So now if we pan around, you can see, well, not perfect, you really just need to scale this up to uh, wherever you see yourself uh, needing the camera for this scene, which I think for this, for now, this will be good. We might want to uh, move it a bit more to the uh, the right a bit and maybe scale it up even more. All right, that's looking good for now. We might play around with it more later just to see what suits our fancy. Uh, and so pushing this back in Z-Space also allows us to get some proper depth in the scene. So if we uh, take the pan tool and we pan around, you can see that uh, while Golza is moving around pretty pretty fluidly with the pan, uh, the sky is not so much, and that really creates some depth in the background. So if we pan along like we, like we will in this camera shot, uh, we get some real definition there. And it looks a lot more realistic, even though this is uh, not true 3D. So like I said, one thing that we could do is make a, a city with element 3D. You know, like I uh, said, just plop element on there, scene setup, metropolitan, we'll just, you know, 
go to one of the uh, the pre-made cityscapes or something. Hit OK. Bam, there's a city. Make it big. And then rotate it. Position it. Add lights. And position them and get a, some shadows going and all that. You know, bam, that's, that's the basic idea of Element 3D. But we're not doing that because that's a paid plugin. So instead, I've got some uh, images of buildings over here. Just some various uh, leftovers from the days of Zone Fighter Season 1. And now, uh, you know, you can use building images or miniatures. Uh, really just make sure that these are separate elements that you want to put into your scene here. So, uh, you know, let's just bring a couple in. Let's bring in Building 2. And, you know, make them 3D layers as they come in. And now this one, let's have this be a foreground element. So let's bring it forward in Z-Space. Maybe we'll uh, flip the transform a bit. Play with the rotation a tad. Just get this, uh, you know, in an interesting looking position. Make some good uh, foreground, background definition here. Could get some cool low angles this way. Put some more in the background. Make them 3D, and we'll push these back in Z space again, so that we get some more uh, depth in the shot, and the objects are all placed separately. And uh, you know, we'll just keep placing these until we uh, find a setup that we're happy with. Okay, so this is a very basic scene, obviously, uh, but I'm happy with the layout we have. So uh, what I'm going to do here in this scene is, uh, you know, we're going to have some camera movement, and we're going to have goals. Uh, Fire uh, his little head crest beam at uh, this building right over here, and we're going to make it explode and all that stuff. So uh, let's go ahead and do the camera movement. So on the camera, we will keyframe the position as well as the orientation. And uh, we'll start at the beginning here, and we'll just, uh, you know, find an angle that uh, we enjoy. Maybe we'll, right before he fires the beam, Come around and uh, tilt down just a tad, get a little bit more eye level. And then as he fires the beam, we'll uh, dolly in a little bit, pan down and pan right to see the beam intercept the building. Okay, got a you know, a nice little basic looking animation going on there. Uh, so one thing I'm noticing, uh, this is just a general cinematography thing. Uh, the camera seems to, we don't have the beam in place yet, but it seems like it's kind of anticipating the beam a little bit. You know, we pan like right before the point that I would want it to fire. So let's maybe move these keyframes forward a tad. Have this take a little bit longer. Just so uh, the camera movement seems a little bit more reactionary. You know, like the uh, the person or whatever is controlling this camera isn't anticipating that beam to come. So let's uh, set ease keyframes by pressing F9 on both of these just to smooth out that transition. Actually on these ones here, since this is again reactionary, uh, we'll right click on ease on the, the keyframe assistant and we'll have an easy ease out. Just so uh, we, we don't come to a stop because uh, maybe the cameraman is uh, going to keep going this way, but then he fires the beam, so then he goes, oh, i got to pan this way to catch that, uh, that exploding building over there. So yeah, that just smooths it out and uh, makes a nice, quick little camera movement. Nothing too uh, extraordinary, but, you know, that's going to get the job done for us. So real quick, I want to change a property on the camera real quick. So let's hit AA real quick there to bring up the uh, camera options. And uh, what I'm noticing here is that uh, we have a very, very deep focus. Um, and uh, what I mean by that, if you're unfamiliar with the term, is that uh, pretty much everything in this shot is in focus, from the sky to Golza to the buildings behind him, and even this building in front of him to uh, you know the extent that the resolution of it can hold up. And uh, so those of you who are, you know, perhaps currently learning film, uh, you will learn about depth of field, and that is what is in and out of focus. So right now we have the uh, depth of field on, and uh, the camera in After Effects works like any old camera. 
So if we uh, mess with the aperture, we get uh, different depths of field. And automatically, the camera assumes that uh, the position 0 in Z space is uh, where the focus automatically lands, which right now is where Gulza is, which is what we want, so that's good. So we can play around with the uh, aperture, and uh, if we bring the property mount up, then uh, we get a uh, then we get a shallower depth of field. So uh, our uh, area of focus is much uh, less dispersed. So I won't bring it up too much since this is an outdoor shot and normally the aperture would be decently open uh, without the use of an ND filter. So we'll keep it somewhere around this for now. Um, this will slow down rendering a tad, so for now we'll just turn depth of field off. And uh, we'll re-enable that when we're ready to render. But it's there so we have it ready. So next, let's make a 3D beam to hit that building. So let's go ahead and make a new solid. We'll call this beam. And uh, like always when making these beams, we'll do CC Particle World. And whoa, that is looking different than normal. Uh, if you're noticing here, the effect is actually responding to the camera. CC Particle World um, is a built-in After Effects effect, a built-in particle system, and it will automatically uh, attach itself into 3D space. So what we can do is if we uh, set the animation to fire, uh, do our usual thing, you know, make the producer size a little smaller, bring down velocity perhaps, up the gravity, same old little shindig that we have going on here. This isn't a tutorial for Gulza's head crest beam. Um, we're just making a quick mock-up here. Um, but if you notice, our normal little thing that we do where we rotate the effect camera, it uh, does not work. And that is because, again, uh, the particle world currently is responding to the After Effects camera. So it would seem like we can't really make the beam go in any direction. Um, since Particle World is a pretty basic particle system, we don't have the advanced tools that, say, something like Particular from Trap Code would offer. Um, but we can work around this. So right now we have the gravity vector right here. Um, the gravity is currently in uh, the Y, positive Y. And so you see there, if we uh, bring the value into the negative, then we get uh, an inverted gravity vector going on. So the gravity um, in this simulation is uh, going in the opposite direction. So we can go ahead and, uh, you know, make a positive x gravity vector, and we'll set the y to 0. And uh, bada bing, we got a, a beam that is shooting sideways. We'll actually make this a negative x, so it's shooting in the direction that we want. You know, we'll uh, just get a basic little position for this beam down. Maybe we'll add a bit of positive y vector, just so we are shooting more upwards straight as it would look. You can even alter the z a little bit if you wanted to go toward the back in z space. Again, this is a very primitive particle system, so you're not really going to get uh, the best results, but you know, it's going to be something that works for us. So let's uh, have the beams start firing off there. Yeah. So Golza fires a beam from his head and hits the building. So uh, I'll just go through and fix up this beam real quick, make it look a little bit more presentable. Okay, so we got Golza firing off a basic beam there. And, uh, you know, we got some some good stuff going on here now. So uh, next let's do a little bit of destruction, shall we? So uh, I'm using some stock footage from Action VFX here, like always. Um, so let's get an aerial explosion. Let's well, one should work. We'll see what other ones we got. Eight, and then we'll go with one. I like that. Drop that in, make it a 3D object. And uh, right as the beam it's the building on that frame right there. We'll rotate that explosion. 
get it right on the building where we want. And uh, we'll hard cut that explosion so it looks a little bit more, it pops a little bit more, you know? So uh, that just really shows, uh, you know, how simple it is for us to uh, add in more elements in this 3D space. So long as you're aware of uh, how all of your elements are positioned and uh, what depth to put them at and how to work the 3D tools, which are very simple. Um, and there are other tutorials out there that cover uh, some more in-depth functions of the camera. And uh, I'm, I'll probably add more elements in here, but I think that this is a good place to call this tutorial. Nothing super crazy, but uh, you know, if we enable that depth of field and we do a RAM preview, we've got a pretty nice looking quick uh, 3D shot here. Something pretty dynamic, looks nice. It's got a lot of nice elements in it. And yeah, this was made, you know, very, very quickly, I think. From start to finish was about 25 minutes exactly just to get this um, while walking you guys through it so you know if you take advantage of these tools that After Effects gives you and uh, really take the time to practice and learn them and just keep going at it you can really churn out some nice looking stuff very quickly and that's uh, you know that's uh, the struggle of being a VFX artist is uh, time is everything you gotta be the fastest and also the um, most proficient at your craft at the same time so I hope this was a uh, good introduction and uh, helped you learn some more in-depth tools of After Effects. And I hope that you, uh, you know, take the time and patience to uh, learn these tools yourself and really amplify your VFX skills and artillery. So that's about going to do it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and if you have any requests, leave them in the comments below, or if you want to see them made with top priority, then uh, consider supporting us on Patreon, where we have a tier that you can uh, get your tutorial requests put at the top of the list, and they will be made right away, as soon as possible. So, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will catch you all here next time with whatever it is that I have to offer. I would like to give thanks to all of our current Patreon supporters, including Deadzilla, Goji73, Liquid Pestar, Project Godzilla, Kaiju Conversation Justice, Yao Yao9, GWRZilla, Jeff King, Johnny Sacco, Mason Ramon, Ultriob, William Zorio, Kaiju X, and That One Godzilla Fan. If you want to see your name at the end of each of our videos as well, in addition to some other awesome rewards, then be sure to stop by patreon.com slash daikaiju legends.